Okay, on your market set and go, um, if you want to look at this page right here. Um, so there's a, this is a, a sheet I put together. Um, oh, sorry, I'm, you don't have all the notes. Sorry about that. So I'll give you this sheet tomorrow, and I'd just like to show you a few things that are on it so you can reference it. Uh, number one, I, I just call it various calculus notes, and, and we skipped all that this year. Um, we did do continuity, um, if you remember the three rules of continuity. Uh, we talked about um, the formal definition, the derivative f prime of x equal to one as h goes zero, so on and so forth. Um, this is something that we're getting to. So this is our last kind of unit on that specifically focuses on derivatives. It, you never are in calculus where you don't take derivatives, but you know the the focus turns from derivatives to integrals. So there's three big ideas in calculus. One is derivatives. One is integrals, and the other one is limits. If you notice, limits are popping up all year. So kind of touch on limits here and there and all over the place. But um, uh, this is kind of the one that, that people are interested in looking at off to the left-hand side. Notice all these derivative rules. So I'll give you that tomorrow, and you have all these derivative rules that you have learned over the course of the year so far, and you've committed them all to memory, which is great. Good job. Um, have we used a little bit of our laws of logarithms? Yeah, and I know that that's something that we generally forget from time to time, right? So I, I put that on this sheet so you can reference. And maybe we don't always remember some of our Pythagorean identities, trig substitutions, right? It's possible we might forget some of that. So I've tried to put one sheet together that has all that information. So um, so this is something you kind of look at. And I'll, again, I'll give that to you tomorrow. And, you know, kind of the... The, the left side and, and some of the center is what we've covered. And then we'll end up going over to the right side where you see that, that crazy symbol there. It's called an integral, and uh, we'll teach you what that means. So we're, we're kind of at that transition point. We need to learn like what we can do with the derivative, why is it important. And then once we, we do that, then we after we get to the applications, and then we go on to what we refer to as integrals, uh, which are extremely fun, so I, we will love every minute of it. So let's start here, uh, application of the derivative uh, minimum and maximum values. And we start here. It says, uh, a critical number of a function f is a number c in the domain of f such that either f prime of x is equal to 0 or uh, f prime of x does not exist. So what does that mean? Okay, well, we're, we're making a, uh, it's a definition, we're defining a critical number to be anything where the derivative is equal to zero or the derivative does not exist. Can somebody give me an example of where a derivative is equal to zero? What's that? Like, like this? Like at the bottom? I don't know. Slope flattens out, so like if you have an upside down parabola, it would be at the top of the parabola. We all agree there? So as you look here, uh, there's all sorts of points where we have the derivative equal to zero, isn't there? Uh, for example, um, would you agree that at c sub 2, at this point, the derivative is equal to zero? We would say that that is an example of a critical point. And that's really, really important. Um, you know, right now in uh, college algebra, we're, we're graphing things, so we'll see if you see if you can remember this. Okay, you ready? F of x is equal to we'll say x times x plus two times x minus three quantity squared. Remember when we graphed those shapes last year a little bit? Okay, I'm getting a big no. Let's uh, talk about it a little bit. If you were to multiply this all out. What degree of a function would you get? Would you get x to the first, x to the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth? What would you get if you multiplied it all out? x to the fourth. Very good. Yep. And uh, if you multiplied it all out, would that be a positive x to the fourth or a negative x to the fourth? It would be positive. And because it was positive, you said it ends up. And do you remember, since it's an even degree, since it's even, do you remember if they start and finish in the same direction or the opposite? Do you remember? Same direction. Good job. So, um, you know, and, and we're going to we're gonna eventually sketch this curve in this class. Um, it, it's it's going to be pretty neat as you see it. And we're going to be able to do something uh, that, you know, before you couldn't do at all. And part of what we want to see here is, would you agree it crosses the x-axis at zero? 
it also crosses at negative 2 and it crosses at positive 3. And the difference is, is that we say it crosses at positive 3 kind of twice. This is what we call a double root, a double root. Uh, we sketched those last year. You tested on it. You guys were super good at it. Um, and and this is the shape that we got. And, and you don't have to remember all of it, but uh, we're, we're going to kind of bring it back to you over time. We had a single root, so it passed through, and a single root and passed through, and then a double root. So right at that spot, it makes a parabola kind of shape. Got a little bit, remember our polynomial unit, a little bit? Well, here was the question that you asked when we were on our Google Meets, a meeting from time to time, and like asking questions. Part of your question was this. You're like, Mr. Gens, I know where it goes through the x-axis. But what I don't know is this, is how high or how low do we go? You know what I mean? And that's important because as you look at this piece, this is what we call a minimum. And there's certain things in this world that we like to minimize. For example, we like to minimize cost, right? I mean, that would be a good thing in a business. So being able to find minimums and maximums, we, we like to maximize these. We like to maximize, say, efficiency. You know, how, how do we do that? And, and so finding that location is, uh, is pretty important. So knowing where those spots are and how to determine it, it turns out that at those spots, the derivative is equal to zero. It's a critical point. And so in our applications, that's where we start. We have to find those spots where the derivative is equal to zero or does not exist. And that's where we'll start today. So here we have it. Absolute min, uh, or absolute maximum, or global maximum. Can somebody look at this and tell me at what C value do we have the largest value of the entire graph? Degrees at C4. Everybody see that? And how about our absolute minimum? C sub 1. So that's different than a local maximum or local minimum. So global means over the entire graph. Local means just within a small area that is bigger than everything else around it. Would you agree that that's bigger than everything else right around it? I don't want to give you the real technical math version. I just want you know bigger than everything right around it. So. Um, so C sub 2 would be a local maximum. Sometimes people refer to it as a relative maximum. Local and relative are, are interchangeable, just as global and absolute are. Uh, what other spot do we have a local maximum? Yeah, it turns out that C sub 4 is a local maximum, and it's also a, a global maximum. It's both, you know what I mean? Uh, how about minimums? Where are those occurring? C, C sub 1, C sub 3, C sub 5. Now, we're actually not going to call C sub 1 a local minimum. And the reason why we don't call it local minimum is there's nothing on the other side, is there? So to be local, you've got to have something on both sides. Okay? We okay with that? All right. Last piece here. At one of these C values, you can't take the derivative. Anybody see a spot up there where you can't take the derivative? Why can't you take the derivative here? It's a corner. So sometimes functions have corners, and that causes an issue for us. Okay, So uh, be aware that most of the time we look where the derivative is equal to 0. Sometimes we look uh, to where the derivative does not exist. Okay, And so we took care of that. Okay, All right, Fermat. Fermat was a great mathematician, and he came up with a theorem that says this. If f has a local maximum or minimum at c, and if f prime of x exists, so if the derivative exists, so that rules out this situation, right? So there's a local maximum or local minimum, and, and we know the derivative exists, so it gets rid of this guy. Then we know something is true, and that is f prime of x is equal to 0. So local minimums and maximums are beautiful because it's equal to 0. Oh, my goodness. Now I want to show you something. Okay. Ready for a, a fun proof? Uh, yes, thanks. Ready? 
Just watch. Anybody remember the formula for vertex of a parabola? Good. Uh, so we only got negative b divided by 2a. Now, you maybe didn't remember that right away, but now that you see it, remember that's how we come up with the x value of the vertex? Does everybody agree that that's where the derivative is equal to 0? I'm going to prove for you right now that uh, the x value of the vertex is negative b divided by 2a. Let's take the derivative. What's the derivative of ax squared? 2ax. Good. What's the derivative of bx? b. And what's the derivative of constant? 0. Well, we know that the vertex is where um, it comes to a minimum, so therefore the derivative is equal to 0. Let's solve for x. If you were going to solve for x, what would you do to both sides? So negative b is equal to 2ax divided by 2a. So negative b over 2a is equal to x. That's the x value of the vertex. So I could do a lot of stuff, um, but that's just one general proof. And now you're like, hey, proofs aren't as bad as I thought. All right, let's look at critical points. Here's an example of a max and min for critical points. So if you have this kind of shape here, notice that we have a critical point in uh, two locations. We have this critical point, and we have that critical point. Local maxes and local mins. There's another time we can have critical points, and as you said, that that's, that's at a corner, okay? So um, if you have this kind of a shape, then we would say that that's another example of a critical point right there. Now, there's, there's a time where the derivative does not exist. Uh, first of all, the derivative does not exist here because it's a corner, right? We also talked about the derivative not existing for vertical tangent. So if you have a graph that looks like this, then notice that that's where you have a vertical tangent. What does it mean to have a vertical tangent? What does that mean about the slope? The slope is undefined, therefore the derivative does not exist. Now, I'm gonna this is one that sometimes people like to talk about, but this is this is not true. So this is the one that you gotta gotta kinda, you know, special think about, but it's it's the undefined scenario. So where is it here that you cannot take the derivative? At x equals zero, right? However, is zero part of the domain. So that's the function of 1 over x. Is 0 part of the domain? No. So it's hard to say that it's a critical point if it's not even part of the domain. Do you see what I'm saying? Like here, that's part of the domain. That's part of the domain. The graph doesn't ever cross over 0. So although we say we can't take the, the, the derivative at 0, technically it's not a critical point. Okay, Not a critical point. This could be a two-day lesson for us, so we'll get through what we can today so you can have some more time tomorrow. Let's start with the examples you're going to be using in class. Find the critical numbers of the function. Confirm the critical numbers by sketching a graph of the function. So the way that you can check this is to sketch it on your calculator. We may or may not do this. How do we find critical numbers? We take the derivative. And we look for where the derivative is either 0 or it does not exist, right? So what's the derivative of this? Good. So now just <laughs> so we think about the graph. Does everybody agree that that's a parabola? It's defined for all real numbers. The domain is all real numbers. So is there any spot here where it's wonky and you got a corner or something like that? No, it's just a nice behaving parabola. So we don't have to worry about it not existing somewhere. So we just set it equal to zero. So uh, let, let's uh, take this guy and we're going to factor it. How does it factor? Good. 
So where are the two values where it's equal to zero? One and one third. Take out your calculator. If you got it, if you don't, follow along with me. I type in that original function, x raised to the third, minus 2x squared, plus x. And I want to think critically about that function. It says it has critical values at one third and at one. That means it should have local maximums and local minimums at that spot. So I'm going to look at the graph and see if I, in fact, come up with that. Looks like the graph just kind of flattens out, doesn't it? I mean, it, you know, it's just kind of a cubic, but I'm guessing there's some behavior there. Let's change my window. I'm going to change my window to go from uh, my y values. I'm just going to go from negative 1 to positive 1. Really kind of crunch in on the graph a little bit. Ooh, see it now? Okay, I'll, I'll crunch in this way horizontally. So go to my window, I'll change the x values from negative 2 to positive 3. See what I get there. Okay, everybody got a good view of the window? So as I press trace, um, I'm going to go to the maximum here. The maximum happens at 0.33 approximately, right? I mean, my, my cursor isn't on perfectly. If I move over to the right, it looks like the minimum happens at a value of 1. See how it confirms? There we go. Okay, let's move to the next one. How do you want to find this derivative? Quotient rule? You could do the quotient rule. You could also do something else. Everybody agree that this is the same as x minus 1 over x? If you were to divide each of these terms by x, do you not get x minus 1 over x? Are you okay with that? Okay, so let's uh, work with that. For what values is this function not defined? What number can you not plug into this function? So therefore, the domain is x cannot be 0. It works for all other numbers. Now, if you want to use the quotient rule, that's fine. I like looking at my options because I think it's easier to take this derivative just like it is. So here we have it. We have a, a derivative of x is. Okay, and then I have negative, this is negative x to the negative 1. That's what negative 1 over x is. What's the derivative of negative x to the negative 1? Negative. 1 over x squared. Drop the negative in front, turns positive. Subtract 1, you get negative 2. So 1 over x squared, so we got plus 1 over x squared. Yes? Okay. So, where is this function undefined? For what values? X cannot be 0. That matches what we had, right? If that doesn't match, there's a problem. Okay, that's a big problem. So, let's set it equal to 0. So I have 0 is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 over x squared. 0 is equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 over x squared. I would like to solve that. When you're doing this, please create one fraction on one side if you're doing the rational expression. In order to add fractions, what do I have to have? Common denominators. Multiply top and bottom by x squared. And I get 0 is equal to x squared plus 1 over x squared. Now, wherever the bottom is equal to 0 is where it's undefined. But wherever the top is equal to 0, that's where it's 0. Everybody get what I'm saying? If, if I end up with this, very important you understand. So we'll, we'll, this is a piece that comes up a lot, this unit. Let's say I have 5 over 0. Is that 0 or undefined? Undefined. And so we already know where 0 on the denominator, right? That's at 0. But if we get 0 over 5, then this is equal to 0. So wherever the top is 0, that's what makes the whole thing 0. Is x squared plus 1 ever equal to 0? No, it's not. No, it's not. So there are no critical points.
I'm going to look at the original function, parentheses, x squared minus 1, and I'm going to divide that by x. And I'm going to zoom standard, and I should see a function that, see how it has crazy behavior at 0? It does not exist. But is there ever a point I have a local min or a local max? There's none. And so we just showed there are no critical points. We didn't know what that graph looked like ahead of time. We figured something out. Last one. Okay, right here. What shape does that make? A, yeah, it makes a V-shape, right? And you got a corner. So if it's a V-shape, you guys tell me, is there ever a spot where the derivative is equal to zero? No, there's no point where the derivative is equal to zero. The derivative is always negative, or the derivative is always positive. It's never zero, but there's a spot where the derivative does not exist. Where, where would that be? Yeah, at the corner, right? At the corner. How do you find the corner? Well, that's just where um, you know we find this corner. Uh, we just set this in, uh, inside part equal to zero here. So 3x minus 6 is equal to zero or 3x is equal to 6, or x is equal to 2. Everybody see that? I, I want to just carry this on so you can understand a little bit more. Suppose we had y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1 uh, minus 4. So that's a v shape, right? So what's the shift? Down 4 and left one. Everybody agreed? Left one and down four. So if you were to look at this guy right here, notice the V-shape that I get. For what X value do you have a, do you have a, do you have a derivative not equal zero? X equals negative one. Yeah, we don't care about the vertical shift, do we? You just care about whatever the horizontal shift was. So did we even have to take a derivative at that situation? No. So if you get an absolute value function, please take note of that. And that's where we end for today. We'll pick up the rest uh, tomorrow. Good work.